This is ITP115 programming in Python, and I'm going to introduce lists. First, let's remember that we know what a sequence is, like a string, that we can talk about the item at index zero, the item at index one, from the beginning all the way to the last item, which is the number of items minus one. And before we said that there's two kinds of sequences, mutable or changeable and immutable. And of course, strings are of the latter kind, immutable, you cannot change them. So here's a string uh, word with game as the value in it. You can print it, you can talk about word zero, that would be the G, but you cannot change the G to an L. So if strings are immutable, then the question is, what is mutable? What kind of sequence can we change? And to warm up to this idea, let's say that we are getting some test scores from the user. So they put in one score, we'll put that in a variable called test score one, we'll put the next score in variable test score two, we'll put the next variable in test score three. That's a little cumbersome, but it's not too bad yet. But what if we have six scores? Now here's what the program looks like. Test score one, test score two, test score three, test score four, test score five. We're just getting lots and lots of variables here. And the program is of course looking long and repetitive. Um, and you can't really use a loop well because you still have to name all those separate variables. So the answer is we have a sequence which is called a list. We can put all the scores on one list. So list, it's a new type of variable. Um, and sequence uh, lists are like strings, but they are mutable. And also lists can contain all kinds of stuff. So whereas a string is just a sequence of letters, a list can be a sequence of anything. And I've got a little note down here in the corner that points out that you can mix different types in a Python list, but it's kind of weird to do that. And most languages don't let you do that. And we don't usually need to do that. So um, we're not gonna do it. Lists for us will all have the same kind of thing on it, at least for a single list. Different lists can have different kinds of things on them. So here's the syntax for it. Give a variable name, same rules for variable names, equals, and then square brackets, and then whatever's in the square bracket separated by commas, that's what makes up our list. And these items, item one, item two, they could be a string or an int or a float or another list. Um, or any other variable type that, that we come up with. And remember, they can be changed. So we're gonna have to uh, go over all the syntax of how to uh, change it in various ways. So here's an example. We have one list called things, um, and it has two strings on it, emu and pig. We have another list called stuff, and it has three strings on it. So they're both lists of strings. And if we say things plus equals stuff, okay, so that puts the stuff, which is these three things, on the end of the things list, right? So things was originally just emu and pig, and now we've got dog, cat, and bow attacked to the end of it. And if you don't like this syntax, things plus equals, you could really just say things equals things plus stuff. That works the same. So here's another thing we could do with our original list. We can pull out stuff bracket zero. Remember when we did that with string, it pulled off the first character, the zeroth character. Well, for stuff, this pulls out the first item, which is dog. So something is now dog. And we have to watch out for types. Stuff is a list of strings. So stuff bracket zero is one of those just a string, and so something is also just a string. It's not a list 
anymore. It's a string. We can also use the slicing syntax that we had with strings. So instead of a single number in here, we're going to go number colon number. So stuff number zero colon two. Let's see, stuff zero to two, but remember it goes up to but not including. So that should just be dog and cat. So grab bag is going to get assigned the list, which is just dog and cat. And grab bag as a slice of a list of strings is a list of strings. We can also use the len function that we saw with strings and ask how long is this list of stuff? So stuff is obviously three items long there. So length equals len stuff will get us a variable length with a value of three in it. And now we have a syntax for finding things in the list. You do not have to use the word find. Um, so here it is. If dog in stuff. So this looks for the string dog in this list stuff. And if it's in there, then we're going to get the first part. Else, right, if it's dog is not found in the list, then we'll get the no dog found. And what happens when we run it on this list? Well, dog is there, so we get found dog. And we can also use the word in in a for loop. So for item in stuff, item is now a variable, okay? Um, and it is assigned to the first item of stuff, and we print that, and then it loops around and item becomes the second, well, the one, number one item in stuff, which is cat, and it prints that. And then we loop around again and item becomes the third, uh, number two item, and we print that boa, so this makes it really easy to go through a list. Now, the list that we've seen so far, we created with something in them, square brackets, dog, cat, whatever it was. Um, but you can start a list empty. So here we have numbers equals list parentheses with nothing in the parentheses. Or you can just say numbers equals square brackets with nothing listed in between. And we use this a lot because let's say you want to go back to the scores problem we started with. Um, the program doesn't have any scores in it until you start asking the users. So it really, you'll have a list that starts empty and then we're going to add to it. So now we see when we're talking about adding to a list, that means changing it. Lists are changeable. This is good. So we'll be able to change individual items in the list. We'll be able to replace entire sections or slices of the list. And we'll be able to delete single items or delete entire slices. So there's lots of things that we need the syntax for. How do you do it? So let's start with just changing the contents of a single item. So here's our original list, 12, negative 3, 5. And we're going to change nums. Okay, the name of the list is nums. So nums bracket zero is going to be set to 46. So the 12 is gone. Now it's 46. Then we're going to say nums bracket one equals 324. So the negative three is gone and 324 is now in slot one. And just to check, remember this one refers to the index, not the contents. So here's a whole bunch of methods that we can use. Um, I'm going to talk about the first couple now, append and remove, but there's more we'll do next week. You can sort the list, you can reverse it, turn it around, uh, count what's in it. You can find things and it'll tell you the index of where it found them. You can insert stuff at a certain place. You can pop, which means remove and get the value. Um, you can delete elements and notice the syntax here for del is different, right? All these, it's a list, the name of the list dot and then the function name, but del is different. We'll be able to delete uh, part of a list. Okay, so here's how to use append. We have some list dot append and then some value. So here's an example. 
you have a numbers list, and let's say it already has 3, 5, and negative 12 on it. And then we say numbers.append 40, and it sticks the 40 on the end of the list. So the list had three, now it has four items on it. And remember when I said that we'll do starting with an empty list a lot? That means we're going to use append a lot because that's the way that you get stuff put on the list uh, when it starts empty. Okay, so here is how you do remove. Name of the list, dot remove, and then in parentheses, a value. Not the index in this case, this is the actual value. So here's an example. We have a list of numbers, 3, 5, negative 12, 45. Oh, it's got 5 on there twice. That's interesting. If we say remove five, numbers.remove five, the first one disappears. And we're going to say it again, and it's going to get the next one. Oops. Okay. And if we say it again, it causes a crash. You cannot remove something from the list if it's not on the list. So we'll have to check for that. But that's enough for one video, more in the next one.